Tell why you like Fitch Shampoo. To introduce Fitch's new cream shampoo, and for those who use dandruff remover shampoo, we're sponsoring our third big weekly contest. Prizes include... <laughs> one new Fraser Manhattan four-door sedan. One new Kaiser sedan. Five universal electric ranges. Three Amana home freezers. Two Boss electric washing machines. Thirty universal electric blankets. Easy to enter, easy to win. Get paper and pencil ready. We'll give contest rules and the address now and repeat them again later in the program. Here's all you do. In 25 additional words or less, complete one of these statements. I like Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo because... Or, I like Fitch's cream shampoo because... That's all. To each entry, attach the round paper disc from top of Fitch's cream shampoo jar or carton top from Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo or facsimile. Mail with your name and address to Fitch Shampoo, Box 1723, Chicago, Illinois. There's plenty to write about. Fitch's cream shampoo leaves hair far softer, shinier. It's made with both lanolin and olive oil. Lanolin to soften, olive oil to bring out those sparkling highlights. Forty-two prizes each week for you. Just tell why you like Fitch Shampoo. <laughs> Last week, Phil Harris was voted a stockholder in the Fitch Company. However, unbeknownst to Phil, he was voted only one share. Thinking he had a large block, he went on a spending spree. And now, as we look in on the Harris home, we find Alice berating Phil for his reckless spending. But, Phil, you shouldn't have spent money you didn't have. You should have waited until the Fitch Company sent you the stock. Well, how did I know they were going to hold it in trust for me so I couldn't get my hands on it? Besides, what did I do that was so terrible? All I did was go out and buy a few little things for you, baby. A few little things? You ordered six fur coats, two cars, all kinds of jewelry. And and what on earth was in that barrel that came yesterday? Ten gallons of Chanel number no. five. <laughs> well, I opened the barrel and it didn't smell like Chanel number no. five. It didn't look like it either. It had foam on top. <laughs> I know, but that's a lot of perfume, honey, and the only thing I could find big enough to hold it was an old beer keg. Makes it easy to get at. All you do is just got to turn the tap and the stuff comes right out. (laughs) Oh, gee. Lucky me, I'm the only girl in the world who has perfume on draft. (laughs) Oh, Phil, you're sweet, but you overdo everything. Like the presents you bought the children. Even they think you overdid it. I don't believe it. Hey, kid. Yes, Daddy? Uh, Alice. Do you and Phyllis like the party dresses I got for you? They were nice, Daddy. But don't you think we're too young for strapless evening gowns? (laughs) Oh, well, how was I to know that the kids didn't like that kind of stuff? I liked mine, Daddy. I wore it to nursery school, and all the boys whistled at me. (laughs) Oh, Phyllis, Phyllis. stop fibbing. You didn't wear it, and you know it. I bet if I did wear it, they'd whistle. (laughs) <laughs> now, never mind. you got plenty of time for that. Well, I'm sorry, Alice. I meant well. And another thing. The children wanted a little sand for their sandbox. And what did you do? I ordered eight truckloads of sand. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing, except they dumped it all in the backyard and the place looks like the Sahara Desert. Oh, stop exaggerating, Sahara Desert. There ain't that much sand back there. Well, all I know is the gardener refuses to cross the lawn until we get a camel. <laughs> it's a fine state of affairs when a guy can't spend a few bucks on his family without them ridiculing him. Oh, it's the 
just the way you spend it that I'm objecting to. Well, you even took an option on a mansion in Beverly Hills and talked about putting our house up for sale. But no harm's been done. I canceled the furs, the cars, and the jewelry, and I told the guy I didn't want the mansion in Beverly. Well, how about the sand? They're picking that up tomorrow. <laughs> Mommy, can we go out and play in the sand before they take it away? Yes. Go ahead, children. Oh, children! Yes, Mommy. Be careful of Arabs. <laughs> Don't be so funny. I've learned my lesson. Well, the only thing you did that really bothered me was when you talked about selling this house. But I was only talking, honey. Well, I wouldn't think about selling this place. I would... Oh, it's a phone. I'll get it. Oh, that may be the plumber, Phil. I called him this morning about the bathroom sink. He said he'd call back. Hello? Hello, Mr. Harris. This is Mr. Thomas down at the real estate agency. Has anybody shown up yet? <laughs> shown up for what? To buy your house. Yes, you told me to put it in the papers, attracting a lot of buyers. Buy my house? Holy recording Patrillo. <laughs> Oh, gee, I forgot to cancel that. <laughs> hey, look, Thomas. Hey, Thomas, now look, I've changed my mind. My house ain't for sale, and you've got to yank that ad out. I'm afraid it's too late, Harris. It's already appeared in the morning's paper, and you'll have a lot of people looking at your house today. But look, I... I just sent somebody over to look at the place, a Mr. Morgan. Morgan will be there any minute. Goodbye. But Thomas, I... Thomas. Oh, he hung up. Oh, what a shummeal I am for forgetting to cancel that ad. <laughs> Now, if Alice finds out the house is for sale, I'm really a dead duck. I got to keep any buyers away from Alice. Who called, Phil? Called, uh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, it was, uh, President Truman. <laughs> President Truman? Yeah, Margaret's singing at Carnegie Hall and wants to know the words to Dark Town Poker Club. <laughs> Such a decline. Was it the plumber? Oh, yeah, the plumber. Why didn't I think of something as simple as that? <laughs> hey, you said they're sending a man over. Well, what time will he be here? Uh, uh, I, uh, I don't know. Let's forget about the plumber. What were we talking about before the phone rang? Uh, I was saying how much this house means to me. It has so many wonderful memories, Phil. Honey, remember the day you told me you were going to buy this house for me? Remember how excited I was? Yeah, you were so shaky, I had to steady your hand so you could sign the check. <laughs> I couldn't be happy anyplace else. We started our life together here. The children were born and raised here. And besides, I want to stay and grow old here. You better start aging faster. You won't make it. <laughs> no, what I mean is, is look, uh, how long can you live in one place? I mean, if somebody did come and make us a good offer, we might We're be... not selling our house, and that's final. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go upstairs and write a few letters. And when the plumber gets here, tell him it's the bathroom sink that needs fixing. Okay. Uh-oh. That must be Morgan. i got to get there first. I'll answer the door, honey. I'll get it. Oh, stop running, Phil. I'm right here at the door. I'll answer it. Must be the plumber. How do you do? <laughs> And my name is Morgan. I was... I know. I've been expecting you. Just go right upstairs to the bathroom. <laughs> well, that's very hospitable of you, madam, but I've had a... <laughs> I bathe every day. Sometimes twice a day. Well, I imagine in your sort of work, you have to. <laughs> My work has nothing to do with it. I happen to be very fastidious. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to come in and look things over. Very well, but first, don't you think you ought to go out to your car and change your clothes? <laughs> change my clothes? Well, yes. You're dressed so neatly. I, I don't want you to get your clothes soiled. Don't you think you ought to put on a pair of overalls before you come in? Why? Is your house that dirty? <laughs> Now, just a minute. You're the most insolent plumber I've ever met. Plumber? Admit. Madam, I am not a plumber. I'm here in answer to the ad. What ad? Oh, yes, yes. I got it, honey. It's the ad. I know the ad. Uh, you see, honey, I put an ad in the paper for a musician. I need one for my band. When did you begin using musicians in your band? <laughs> I am not a musician. That reference is good enough for me. You're hired. <laughs> Now, 
Now, bring your trombone to rehearsal tomorrow morning. Goodbye. Now, look, I have no intention of playing with your orchestra. I don't know a bassoon from an oboe. You don't have to. We don't use none of them string instruments. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow at rehearsal, Morgie. So long. I am not leaving. If you and Mr. Morgan will excuse me, Phil, I have to write those letters. I'll be upstairs. Yeah, you run along, Alice. I'll try to talk Morgan into doing the same thing. I'm not running along until I see this house. Beat it, Bob. The house ain't for sale. Beat but it. But the ad said it was. It said it was for sale for $20,000. It said it was open house today, and by George, I'm yeah. going to see it. <laughs> Get lost, bud. Get lost. Beat it. a close call. I wonder how many people saw that ad. If they keep coming in all day, I'll be, uh uh-oh. Oh, that's Morgan again, huh? Well, there's only one way to handle this character. I'm going to have to get tough with him. Now, look here, Junior. I, 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 I. (laughs) Hello, big boy. (laughs) And I wish you wouldn't shout at me, see? Because I'm... I'm very sensitive, see? What's the matter, kid? You in pain? (laughs) Now, uh... Don't get gay with me, Goldilocks. I read the house was for sale, and I came to, uh... Look it over. Well, look, uh, honey, that's a mistake. Uh, it, it, it's not right. The house is not for sale. The aunt said it was, and I'm coming in, see? <laughs> You're not coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Who says I'm not coming in? Phil! Alice says you're uh, <laughs> not. Now get going while your motor's still running. <laughs> That woman, and don't tell me she's a trombone player. Oh, that woman? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. You see, I entered the Fitch contest, and she was one of the 42 prizes. Stop stalling, Phil, and tell me who she was. I don't know, Alice, so I just... Uh... Hey. Are you a little jealous? <laughs> Why should I be jealous of her? She had nothing. I don't know. I thought she had a kind of a pretty face. Oh, I didn't think so. Well, what did you think of her figure? I thought it was abominable. Never mind her stomach. What did you think of her? <laughs> oh, stop it. Phil, sometimes you make me so mad. Uh, I... uh, uh, uh. Temper, temper, temper. Remember the article about us in the new True Story magazine says we never fight. Oh, never mind. I'm going in and get lunch ready. Phil, you're positively incorrigible. Now, wait a minute, honey. Don't go calling me names like that. I'm sensitive about the way you talk to me. And you've got to stop picking on me because I don't mind you telling me that I'm as tacky as a man could be. I reckon you were justified. But I never thought you'd promenade to and fro with the carriage trade. Now you've gone and hurt my southern pride. When you took my honey suckle vine over the Mason Dixon line, I didn't take it teary eyes. But I never thought I'd ever tag you with a Yankee scalawag. Now you've gone and hurt my southern pride. Saucy, Chrissy, bossy, missy. Sashaying all around as if you own the town. Playing possum, a little magnolia blossom. You'd better mend your ways, settle down. Well, shut my mouth and fan my brow, having a heap of wearies now. I hope that you are satisfied. Oh, I never thought the day would arrive when my honey would be in the new beehive. Now you've gone and hurt my southern pride. I'm feeling kind of foolish. 
I'm feeling mighty blue. Well, I'm puckered out with worry. Cause me and my sweetness are through. Saucy and crispy, bossy and misty. Sashaying all around, do as if you own the town. Playing possum, little magnolia blossom. You better mend your ways, settle down. When Pappy said you'd take my dough, wasted away and off you go. I stood right up and took your side. But you headed north when the moon was low with the money I stole from the Benny Show. Now you've gone and hurt my southern pride. <laughs> the most hectic meal I've ever eaten. Phil, why do you make a dash for the door every time the bell rings? Look at you now. You're poised like a sprinter, ready to take off. Stop exaggerating. I just happen to like to drink my coffee from a crouching position. <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz, Alice, you'd think I was trying to keep something from you. You can answer the door anytime you want. Well, I try to, but every time the bell rings, you jump up, give the table a push, and pin me against the wall. I think maybe it's just because you're a little nervous today. Why don't you go in the den and, and read your book or something? All right. I guess I am a little unstrung, but I don't like all those strange people coming to the house. Well, I don't like it either. And neither do I. After all, I was here first. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, are you still here? How'd you get back in? Well, the kitchen door was open, so I walked in. I almost didn't make it. I got lost in the backyard. Lost? Yeah, the wind came up, and I got marooned in a sandstorm. <laughs> and now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to look at the bedrooms upstairs. I'll see you later. Phil, are you going to let him go up and look at our bedroom? I have to. He's a musician. Well, what's that got to do with it? <laughs> what? What's that got to do with Them it? Them guys got a strong union. <laughs> What a madhouse. I'm going in the den. And if anybody else shows up today, I'll... Take I'll, it easy. I'll, take it easy. Now, nobody else is going to show up. I'll get it. I'll get it. Uh-oh, I'll get it. I'll get rid of whoever it is. Hey, whoever's out there, go away. <laughs> go away. No, we don't want any. There's nobody home. You can't come in. Open the door, Curly. This is Frankie. Oh, oh. oh. Hiya, Frankie. That's a fine way to treat your secretary, telling me I can't come in. I'm cut to the quick, Curly. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Frankie, but I'm all up. That's no excuse. As your secretary, I'm entitled to be treated more humanely. <laughs> if a stray dog comes scratching on your door, you'd let him in, wouldn't you? <laughs> of course. Well, I'm as good as a dog, ain't I? <laughs> Well, ain't I? <laughs> oh, Frankie, stop it. I told you you can come in, so come on in. Beg me a little. <laughs> what are you acting like a prima donna for? I got a right to. When you didn't get that fit stock last week, who, who had to do your dirty work and take back all that stuff you ordered? I had to take back fur coats, jewelry, that 10 gallon keg. By the way, what was in that cake? Janelle number five. I got to order some of that stuff. It was the nicest smelling beer I ever tasted. <laughs> Frankie, you shouldn't have drunk that. That's perfume. It is? No wonder my girl kept asking me to breathe on her earlobe. <laughs> <laughs> Will you stop making with the gag, Gremley? I ain't no mood for them. What's the matter with you today, Curly? Are you morose? I can't tell you. Why not? I don't know what that word means. <laughs> Look, Frankie, I've done something awful, and if Alice finds it out, there's no telling what she'll do. She might even leave me. So what? What if Alice does leave you? You don't need her. There are plenty of other fish in the sea. Find me a mackerel with a shape like hers, and I'll listen to you. <laughs> You're not going to pay any attention to me. I'm leaving. But I'm warning you. With a wife, you've got to assert yourself. You've got to stand up to her. Tell her off. How can you talk like that? You're not even married. That's why I can talk like that. <laughs> well, 
Maybe Frankie's got something at that, you know. He might have something. I got to stand up to Alice and tell her the truth. And then when she finds it out, I know she won't mind. Ah, uh, gee, she's a wonderful kid. And she's sweet as sugar. Bill Harris, this is the last straw. I'm so mad, I... Uh-oh, the I... sugar's starting to ferment a little. Honey. <laughs> hey, what's the matter, honey? Oh, don't you honey me. That Morgan friend of yours just broke into the den and chased me out so we could measure it. If one more person comes into this house today, I'll... Don't worry, I'll... Alice. Nobody else will come in. It's getting late now. Whoop, there's the doorbell. I'll get it. Oh, holy smoke, it's a mob. This I time. came to see the house. I was here first. How is it lovely? Got any tonight? Let me in. I want to see the Stop place. pushing. Will you stop pushing? Where's the owner? Down here, madam. You're standing on me. Phil, <laughs> what's all this racket out here? I Phil, what are all these people doing? Why, it looks, it looks like a tour. A tour? Oh, yeah, that's what it is, a tour. I thought we could pick up a little extra dough letting tourists go through our house so they could see how the movie stars live. A tour through our house? That's right. Okay, step right up this way, folks. On your left, we have Alice Bay, the blonde bombshell of 20th Century Pop. Watch this little girl, folks. Just watch her as she shivers. She quakes, she quivers, and she quakes, and she shivers, and... No, wrong field. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake, Phil, what's going on here? We're here to see the place. We'll go up and look the bedroom, though, Val. Yes, and I'm anxious to see the den. Come on, come on. Yes, Alan. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You people can't go through my... Phil, are you going to stand there and allow this? What does all this mean? Oh, now, Alice, it's nothing. You know how, how people are. They're just being neighborly. They're just up... Whoop, there goes that doorbell again. I'll get it. Alice, you tripped me. <laughs> I know. This time I'm answering the door. Well, what do you want? Uh, Alice. Is that any way for you to talk to your brother? Oh, I'm yeah. so sorry, William. Come in. Good afternoon, Philip. <laughs> Briefcases here again. <laughs> Alice, I am a little annoyed with you. After all, I handle all your business affairs. And I should have been consulted before you put your house up for sale. For sale? For sale? For sale. Go ahead, Alice. It's your turn again. <laughs> Here's today's paper with an ad saying your house is for sale for $20,000. Alice, I'm pretty close to you, and I should have been consulted. Well, I'm even closer to me than you are, and I wasn't consulted. <laughs> I don't know who could have hit an ad like Bill Harris. <laughs> oh, pardon me, folks. I got to go in the kitchen and drill some holes in the Swiss cheese. <laughs> Get back here. So, that explains all those people here. How could you do this to me? Well, wait a minute. I can explain. It was all a mistake. I told the real estate man last week to put the ad in, and I forgot to cancel it. Oh, Phil, you're impossible. You certainly are. How can anybody be that stupid? It's easy once you get the knack of it and shut up. <laughs> William, it's been a miserable day. People tracing all over the house, the bell ringing every two minutes, and Paul still running for the door like a scared rabbit. You're exaggerating. I haven't been running. I just... Whoop! There's the back door. I'll get... hey, what am I running for? She knows about it now. Now, who is it this time? It's Julius Abruzio, the grocery boy. Well, what do you want, Julius? Water! Water! I must have water! <laughs> What's the matter with you? None of your business. What do you want? My, my, aren't we testy today? What's the matter? Did you sleep on your bobby chins last night? <laughs> Don't get gay, Junior. What are you doing here? I'm delivering the vegetables, and I... Oh, hello, Miss Fay. Hello, Julia. I'm Miss Fay. You've been crying. Your lovely blue eyes are red. What's wrong, soulmate? <laughs> It's nothing, Julie. But it is. I know it's your husband. This beast here has been beating you. Who, me? <laughs> yes, you, you fiend. You've stuck to woman I love, and there's only one thing I can do. All right, challenge you to a duel. Take that. Julia, stop slapping me in the kisser with them wet turnip greens. <laughs> Julia, please control yourself. Mr. Harris hasn't been beating me. It's nice of you to come to my defense, but I really don't need you. But if I can't save you, there's no use going on. I know what I'll do. 
And I'll do it now. Holy fire, Mon Capitaine. What's with this Mon Capitaine? Where are you going? Out in the backyard and join the French Foreign Legion. <laughs> Him. Wise guy, one of these days I'm going to light up that little punk. Phil. <laughs> Phil, I want you to get all of those people out of this house. Hold on, Alice. It's not as simple as that. Philip quoted the price in his ad. And if anyone meets that price, according to law, he must sell. Oh, no. Now, how are we going to get rid of them? We make an offer, we'll have to sell, and... Wait a minute. They wouldn't make an offer if they thought the house was run down, would they? That's it, honey. All we got to do is tell them that the joint ain't no good. It ain't fit for human consumption. <laughs> Here comes the thundering herd. Let's go into our act. I'm very much interested in this house, and I'm thinking of buying. Just a moment. I want to buy it, too, and I'd like to make a good Please, offer. folks, please. Now, take it easy before you make any offers. Wouldn't you like to see the rest of the house? Yes, wouldn't you like to see the cellar? Yes, I'd like to see the cellar. Oh, before we do, I ought to warn you. It's a little damp down there. Oh, that's all right. I don't mind a little dampness. Let's go down. Very well. Phil, is the lifeguard on duty down there? You mean your cellar gets flooded? Only when we turn the faucets on in the kitchen. Well, why did that flood the cellar? No sink. Oh. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh, it's you again. Yeah, it's me. Where do you keep the towels? Well, you'll find them in the linen closet. Who's that? Who is that? <laughs> well, we don't know. He comes, he comes in every Sunday and takes a bath. And if you want to buy the house, why, he goes with it. <laughs> well, that reminds me. I didn't see the bathroom, and I'm very anxious to see it. <laughs> because I'm a man who likes to take a shower every night. Well, in that case, I don't think you'd like where our bathroom's located. What do you mean, where is it located? Well, I ain't saying, but on a rainy night, you'll need an umbrella and rubbers to get to it. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> well, in that case, I don't think I'd be interested in this place. Neither would I. Well, I'm sorry, folks. Maybe next time. It's this way out. I'll open the door for you. Right this way, please. Thanks. I almost bought this one. What do you expect? I understand that Phil Harris is a hillbilly from Tennessee. Well, they're gone, honey. I finally got rid of them. Oh, thank heavens. Now I can go in and start getting dinner ready. Phil Harris, if you ever pull a stunt like this... All right, honey. Stop picking on me now. Everybody's out, and I promise that there won't be any more strangers coming in. Lock a boy. Lock a boy. Who is that? Well, I don't know. He just came in from the backyard. Hey, wait a minute, Bob. What are you yelling locker boy for? Where do you think you are? Ain't this the Pismo Beach swimming? No, it isn't. Get out of here. Now, come on. Let's have our dinner, huh? It certainly feels nice to be sitting down to dinner with nobody in the house but your own family. All those people. Forget it, Alice. Forget it. They're all gone. Now, come on. Let's enjoy our dinner. Hey, let me help you to some mashed potatoes. I'd like some mashed potatoes, too, Daddy. Okay, honey. How about you, Phyllis? I'll have some. And me, too. No gravy on mine. Oh. <laughs> this is Phil Harris, folks. And now, here are the car winners in our first big weekly contest. The Fraser Manhattan Sedan has been won by Al Herbert, Norfolk, Nebraska. Al Herbert. The Kaiser Sedan has been won by Albert C. Walker, Pueblo, Colorado. Winners of other prizes are being notified by mail. Now, look, everyone has a chance to win. Enter this week's contest before Saturday midnight, and in 25 additional words or less, complete one of these statements. I like Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo because, or I like Fitch's cream shampoo because. Send any number of entries, each on plain sheet of paper. To each, attach the round paper disc from top of Fitch's cream shampoo jar or carton top from Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo or facsimile. Mail entry with your name and address to Fitch Shampoo, Box 1723, Chicago, Illinois. That's Fitch Shampoo, Box 1723, Chicago, Illinois. Winners get immediate delivery on... One Fraser Manhattan sedan, one Kaiser sedan, five Universal Electric Ranges, three Amana Home Freezers, two Voss Electric Washing Machines, 30 Universal Electric Blankets. Entries judged on originality, sincerity, and aptness of thought. Duplicate prizes for ties, judges' decisions final. Any person in the United States or Canada may enter except employees of Fitch, their advertising agency, and families. Entries received after Saturday midnight, judged in following week's contest. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Thank you.